What's going on folks, I'm here at Tool Dino Works, and I am back once again with our Ninja 500 here on the Dino, and this time we're doing some intake testing. Okay, so we went ahead and removed the stock air filter and snorkels that are just kind of shoved in the sides of the airbox, and went ahead and installed the DNA air filter. And it did nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. Uh, we're talking less than a tenth of an AFR change, which results in like a hundredth of a horsepower change. So it's, it's non-existent. Um, if you want to replace it, fine. You'll obviously have a serviceable filter with, you know, something like a DNA or a K&N, but you're not going to notice a single pony improvement. Your butt dyno can't tell and doesn't even make any cooler noises. So, probably just leave the stock one in there. So, after that, kind of semi-disappointing result, but honestly something we kind of expected. Air filters these days are just not big restrictions on most modern motorcycles. We went ahead and pulled the bike back apart and installed the velocity sacks from our friends over at TST that sent them over just for some testing and obviously just some free product to have on our bike. I'm not going to show the installation of these things because they do a way better job of it than I can and it's the exact same installation as the Ninja 400. But what I will show you is the results on the dyno. So just to recap, this is how the bike left the dyno yesterday once we got done dialing in the ECU mapping for the full M4 exhaust with the baffle installed and the stock intake. And that is how the bike runs now with the TST velocity stacks installed and the fuel mapping properly adjusted for the approved airflow at the top end. Now, I'll go kind of across the entire rev range here in just a second, but it kind of goes without saying if you have eyeballs, you can see that that is an enormous top end improvement on this bike. As you can see there at the largest point of improvement, right at about 10,500 RPMs, the bike gained almost five and a half horsepower. Now, you don't ever get horsepower gains like this from velocity stacks without losing somewhere. So yeah, do you lose something? Uh, you lose six tenths of a horsepower there, uh, maybe seven tenths there, maybe eight tenths there, maybe one and a couple tenths way down there at the bottom. But who gives a shit when you're talking about over five ponies out there at the top end? So hats off to the guys at TST. These things work awesome. And we now have custom mapping built for one of these full systems like the M4 with the baffle in and their TST stacks. Now, next up, we're going to go ahead and change up the exhaust system a little bit because I have different options here that we're going to put on this bike and see if there's any significant improvements. I have a feeling we'll find a little bit more power at the top end without a baffle in one of these full systems, but I could be wrong. But even if there isn't significant improvements with the baffle out, the gains over how this bike was stock are already hilarious. That is the bike stock of the blue line there, Run 6, versus how this thing sits right now. And it's gained just under 10 horsepower at the very top end of the RPM range, right there around 10,500 RPMs. And you can see the graph for yourself. The improvements everywhere are just huge. And again, I can't say it enough, this is a massive improvement over the Ninja 400. But we did find one kind of, I don't know what I'd call critical flaw, but pretty significant flaw that we're going to address in our next video. So stay tuned for that, and in the meantime, if you're looking to get your new Ninja 500 properly tuned and dialed in, look no further than tooldinoworks.com. Our ECU flash is now up on the site for $349.99. Send it on over to us, and we'll get a flash to ship back to you the same day that we receive it. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to email us at support at tooldinoworks.com, and we are always happy to help.